Hey everybody, Mr. White here. We are going to talk parallel circuits today. So we've seen series circuits and we know series circuits are a single loop for charge to flow. It's one loop, one pathway. Parallel circuits are multiple pathways or multiple loops. And really it's just a bunch of series loops wired to the same voltage source. Now when we draw these loops, we don't draw them as three separate loops. In a schematic, you would see just single lines representing uh, the shared portions of the loops. And so we can see here, yes, we have three loops, um, but this portion here where they overlap, that's a shared portion. And so we would draw that as a single line, um, not all three, but all three loops are still represented. Now I'm gonna show you an example of a parallel circuit in real life side by side with the FET simulation so that we can see values for current resistance and voltage. You may have to rewatch this part, uh, you know, pause it, back it up, repeat certain sections so you can make observations. I highly recommend that you do that to take the time to make all the observations that you can before we get into the fine details of parallel circuits. In the FED simulation, we can see that we have a potential difference or a voltage across the terminals of 9 volts, and we're going to assume the same for the real-world circuit as well. I've extended the terminals of the battery by running two wires up the whiteboard sheet, and you can see that the FET simulation is set up in a similar fashion. In the FET simulation, though, I've added ammeters in the circuit so that we can see the amount of current in different parts of the circuit. In the first part here, I'm going to add one bulb and create basically a series loop. Notice that when I put the voltmeter across the series loop in the FET simulation, we still have 9 volts across that loop. Now I'm going to add a second bulb in parallel with the first bulb. So basically I'm creating another series loop, but since they're both connected to the same voltage source, they are wired in parallel. Also notice that the voltmeter still reads 9 volts across the second loop. Make sure to keep an eye on all of the values, as well as the brightness of the bulbs. I'm going to turn both lights on and off. You may want to rewatch this part a few times so that you can notice what's going on. Is the other bulb affected? Are any of the values in the simulation changing? Now I'm going to take the second bulb out and replace it with two bulbs. Now these two bulbs will be in parallel with the first bulb, but they will be in series with each other since they are along the same loop together. Remember, all we're doing here is adding series loops and connecting them to the same voltage source. Remember to keep an eye on the brightness of the bulb in the real circuit and the values shown in the simulation. Pay attention to all of the values as I toggle the switches to turn the two bulbs off and then the first bulb off. Does that affect the other loop? Now I'm going to add a third loop that has three bulbs. So these three bulbs will be in series with each other, but they'll be in parallel with the other two loops. Just like the other two loops, this loop is also getting 9 volts from the voltage source. And each bulb is 10 ohms, just like the other loops as well. Watch brightnesses and values in the simulation as I toggle the switches to turn the loops on and off. Take a moment to make some observations. Look at the brightness of all the bulbs in the different loops. Consider they are all the same bulb with all the same resistances. Also take note of the amounts of current in the different parts of the circuit, as well as the voltages at different parts of the circuit. Again, rewatch as needed. Now let's try to explain what we saw, because there was a lot going on. So the biggest thing about parallel circuits, besides the fact that it's multiple loops, is that each loop is independent. Basically what we created when we created that large parallel circuit 
was three independent parallel loops all wired into the same voltage source. If we put a side-by-side -side image of three individual loops and a parallel circuit with the same resistors, it's essentially the same circuit, it's just when you make it in parallel, you can share some of the wires. Since the loops are independent though, we can use Ohm's law separately on each individual loop as if they were just regular series circuits. Now with current in parallel circuits, since each loop is independent, each loop can have its own amount of current and that's based on the resistors in that loop. But if we want the total circuit current or the total current that the voltage source has to supply, then we would just add up all of the current values from each of the loops. The more loops you add to the voltage source, the more total current needs to be drawn from that voltage source. Mathematically, we can say that the total current through the circuit is equal to the current of all of the loops added together. Resistance in parallel is a little weird. So total resistance is less when you add more loops. I know that sounds strange. Inside each loop, yes, you're adding resistors every time you add another loop, and you could add even more resistors within a loop if you wanted to, but the total circuit resistance actually appears to decrease as you add more loops. So let's think about this mathematically first in terms of Ohm's law. We know that voltage is constant for all loops, so V does not change. We know that when we add loops, current increases, and so I is increasing, it's getting bigger. If V is not changing, but I is getting bigger, R must be decreasing to make this work mathematically. So if we want to think about this physically, we could think of cars on a freeway or a, a going over a bridge. Uh, we have a certain number of cars that want to pass through, but they hit some resistance with the toll booth. And so the number of cars per second that can pass by after the toll booth is decreased. Uh, so our car current is affected. Now, if I add another resistor to the circuit, you might think, okay, resistance is going to go up, but look what happens. We are able to allow more cars to pass by each second now. So our car current has increased. So yes, we added resistors, but we added another pathway as well. And so overall for the entire circuit, the resistance has actually decreased. So since our total voltage stays constant and our total current is increasing with each new loop, resistance overall appears to decrease for the entire circuit. Here I have a single loop with a nine volt battery and a 10 ohm resistor. And so current through this loop is 0.9 amps. The ammeter next to the battery is giving us the total current supplied to the entire circuit by the battery. If I add another loop, the battery is now gonna to have to supply 1.8 amps to this circuit. We've added another resistor in parallel, but overall the total resistance of the circuit must have decreased for current to increase without voltage changing. So overall, any added loops are going to get the same voltage from the voltage source as the other loops. The amount of current that the voltage source has to supply is going to increase with each additional loop added because now you have more loops to supply current for. And so total resistance is going to decrease um, mathematically because if voltage is staying the same and current's going up, that means that resistance must be decreasing. And physically, if you think about it, we're giving current more pathways to flow and so because it can flow easier, that means it has less resistance. Now, if one of the loops dies, it doesn't affect the other loops. We saw this as well, and that's a good thing, because if something goes out of your house on one loop, it's not gonna affect the entire house. The only time there is a problem with uh, something breaking in a parallel circuit is if it's along one of those shared pathways. If say the main line or the main part of the circuit where all of the loops are sharing uh, goes out, then that's gonna shut down all of the loops. Otherwise, if it's something within a loop, like say a light bulb goes out on one loop, the other loops, the other lights on other loops won't be affected. Now there are some potential hazards for parallel circuits, one of which is the short circuit. And this basically happens when something in a circuit causes the circuit to shorten essentially, uh, giving current a very, very low resistance pathway. And since charge wants to take the path of least resistance, it's gonna go that way and bypass all the resistors. Well, with very high current comes a lot of heat and that can start a fire. Now, if you've ever plugged a power strip into a power strip before, uh, that's bad. Uh, what you're doing is possibly overloading the circuit. And so if we look at this power strip plugged into the other power strip, um, we have one 
cable that's going to go into the wall from the original power strip and that cable is designed to handle normal things plugged into the five or six outlets on this strip and each of these plugs here these outlets is essentially uh, its own parallel loop for this power strip when you plug in another power strip you are adding that many more loops that now have to be supplied through this wire and that wire is not made to handle that many outlets and so again with too much current through a wire that can't handle it you're going to get a lot of heat and potentially start a fire all right here's a summary of parallel circuits for you go ahead and take a look pause if you need to to write anything additional down let's take a look at a practice math problem so we have a three volt battery connected in parallel to three two ohm lights and that would look like this. So we have our voltage source, three volts, and each of these loops has a two ohm resistor, a two ohm light on it. And so each of these loops will get that three volts. If we wanna know the current through each loop, we can use Ohm's law. So if we wanna find the current through one loop, we're gonna use V equals I times R. And we know that the voltage is the same for all loops, and that's going to be 3 volts. And so our V value is 3. Resistance along that loop is going to be the total resistance for that loop, 2 ohms. And now we can solve for our unknown I, which is 1.5 amps. And that's for one of these loops. Now this is rather easy because all the loops are identical. They have the same amount of resistance and the same amount of voltage, and therefore the same amount of current flowing through them. So each loop has 1.5 amps of current. The battery needs to supply all of that amperage for all of the loops. And so it's not just 1.5. The total current for the entire circuit is actually going to be all of those added together. And so if we take all of the loops current, 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 1.5, we get a total circuit current of 4.5 amps flowing from the battery. I hope that helped. Please consider rewatching the video, maybe pausing or slowing the video down if you want to see certain details. If you do need additional help, please ask for it. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.